Good you ready to go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. let's do it. Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Easter to you. Happy, happy Easter. 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 As I often say at this time, uh, in one way or the other, it is a kind of a bold act to be here. In a, especially in a place where we think often of death, to uh, proclaim something so wonderful and marvelous and miraculous as the uh, resurrection. It's, uh, it is kind of strange in a way to be doing that here, especially. Mm -hmm. no, it brought yeah. to mind when I was thinking about that, um, those people that show up in uh, Foxborough, Massachusetts Stadium wearing Buffalo Bills jerseys. <laughs> That's kind of the way we are. We're uh, kind of a divine, a divine descent, a dissenting voice, talking back to the voices of death and despair and discouragement with a word of hope that's rooted in the resurrection of Christ. So in our Easter defiance, we are essentially saying that ends are not ends, final is not final, and what we thought was the end is just the beginning. But as with so many cases of dissenting voices, they need to support one another. And we need to support each other in our blessed uh, dissent. So let's do that first by singing together in the garden. This guitar is keyed to the key of damp. <laughs> I come to the garden alone, while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the song of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks. God in the beginning was the Word, and the Word still speaks, and always will, speaking a message of eternal hope, a message of second chances, new beginnings, resilient love. We gather in your name and in your presence this Easter morning to let that Word resound within our hearts, resound through these hills, and within our lives, as we celebrate Christ's victory over death and proclaim our thanks and praise to you. May our spirits be ever renewed in your Easter 
glory. Amen. 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 Now reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, while they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them, who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. <clears throat> There's a slogan within the United Church of Christ that's been splashed across posters and coffee mugs and all kinds of other paraphernalia for years. And it's the slogan, God is still speaking. It's a handy slogan reminding us that God hasn't retired and gone to Tampa to play golf for the rest of eternity, <laughs> that God is active, engaged, and still speaking. But for all the creative energy that went into coining that slogan years ago, I think there's probably a much simpler way of voicing the same message, and I think Luke's passage today articulates that in a big way, particularly with the word, but. Today's passage, if you take a look at it later, contains no fewer than six buts, starting the passage off with but. But on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. It's not here, but has risen. But these words seemed like an idle tale. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. That's a lot of buts. <clears throat> My dad never cottoned to the word but. He didn't like it. And a lot of parents react that way. Butts never got me very far, because essentially it was a contradiction of whatever went right before. And parents know that, and they don't like it. But when it comes to the gospel, the but is precisely the good news. In our previous episode, that is the scripture immediately prior to today's reading, we left the women watching as Joseph of Arimathea laid Jesus in the tomb. The end. Dead end. At least it sure looked like feels much more final than death. And who could blame them for assuming that that was it? But there's another UCC slogan that reads, don't put a period where God has placed a comma. Maybe you've seen that. Again, you find it plastered on everything from billboards to keychains. The fact is, the UCC did not invent that slogan. That one came from Gracie Allen. <laughs> it was a product of grace. And I hope her estate was well compensated by the UCC. But essentially, it's the same message. We stand in a graveyard here this Easter morning, announcing the Easter miracle of resurrection in a kind of cheeky defiance of death. We come here to a place that's steeped in death, only because God prompts us to, if you will, get our butts out of bed and go proclaim the big butt what we thought was the last word really isn't. Does it matter? I believe it does. It matters every time we face what appears to be a dead end, locked door, last straw, and find that by golly, it's not. Every time we've written something off, closed the book, cashed it in, and God has a bigger, longer story, often we can't, one that we can't see immediately. I've used this example before, but it occurs to me standing here, I think of the Johnson Kennedy funeral home. <clears throat> and 
50 years ago, if somebody had used that phrase, Johnson Kennedy Funeral Home, they would have thought you were crazy. Two prime competitors in Ontario County. It would never happen. Well, of course, it's happened many times. Unlikely partners coming together in astonishing ways. Think of ExxonMobil, for better or for worse. Time Warner, International John Deere. Oops, sorry. Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> but the point is, never say never. But it's not just corporate mergers that are surprises. The big gospel of the big gospel but occurs whenever relationships happen when you never would expect them. When they maybe they're healed, when a dream is resurrected, a hope is restored. Whenever the last page of the book turns out to be the first page of the next book. God doesn't place a period. Frankly, I'm not sure that God even places a comma. Maybe God doesn't punctuate at all. Mm -hmm. Maybe God writes the way a lot of folks write on Twitter nowadays, just run on sentences. Yeah. <laughs> well, however God does syntax, God has conquered sin and death and despair, and we are here to announce that. So the next time that somebody responds to you with that annoying but, just consider it a reminder, a reminder of God's big but the one that brings life and life again and life eternal. God is still speaking and will forever. But that doesn't mean the preacher should, so I will wrap this up <laughs> and get into the social hall and enjoy our banquet. But my Easter prayer is that you find that resilient hope and that energy.